Hello everybody, this is Jaira Vorbis, and today we're going to be talking about two-dimensional vectors. Now, vectors and vector mathematics form the basis for 3D game development. And while the vast majority of simple 2D games using raster graphics and software blitting might not require vectors, the second that you step into more advanced topics such as hardware acceleration, physics simulations, transforms, and collision, they become just as relevant to the 2D world as they are in 3D. A vector is represented as an ordered grouping of values and is denoted with the half arrow symbol to differentiate a vector from a scalar value. Each value within the vector is called a component or element of the vector and each of these components represents a displacement or distance from the origin along an axis. So let's look at vector v, for example. Our x component is 3. Now our y component is 5. We have displaced 3 on the x-axis and 5 on the y-axis. This vector now represents the point 3, 5. It is important to keep in mind that there is more than one geometric interpretation of a vector. Consider two points A and B. Point A is located at 5, 6, while B is located at 2, 1. Now the same vector V that represented the point 3, 5 now represents the distance between the two points A and B. We can see this by subtracting the two components. 5 minus 2 equals 3, and 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. In this sense, our new vector represents the displacement from point A to B. This is usually denoted as AB with the half arrow vector symbol. Keep in mind that while vector AB is numerically equivalent to the original vector V, the two are interpreted differently geometrically. A vector is formally defined as a geometric object that has both a direction and a magnitude. The magnitude of a vector is the straight line distance from the origin to the point the vector represents and is denoted with the absolute value symbols. Given a vector v with components 4, 3, we are able to find the magnitude of the vector by using Pythagorean's theorem or the distance formula, which is the square root of the sum of each component squared. We find that the, vac the magnitude of our vector v is 5. Now, to find the direction of our vector, we must divide each component by the vector's magnitude. This process is called normalizing and produces a direction vector or a unit vector whose magnitude is 1. We now have a magnitude and direction describing our original vector, which brings us to another way to represent a vector. Any vector may be represented as a scalar magnitude multiplied by a direction vector, which has a length of 1. For our example, we multiply our direction vector 3 fifths, 4 fifths, by our magnitude of 5. Now, we can clearly see that we are, have arrived back at our original vector. Just like with scalar numbers, vectors have a defined set of operations that may be performed on them. You guys already saw scalar multiplication when we multiplied a scalar magnitude by a vector direction to represent a vector. When we multiply a vector by a scalar, we multiply each component of the vector by the scalar. This is called scalar multiplication. And geometrically, we are scaling the vector when we perform this operation by the scalar that we are multiplying. Vector addition and subtraction are also extremely straightforward. For addition, you simply add the components of the first vector to the second. The same goes for subtraction. Geometrically, we can add two vectors together by drawing the tail of the second vector starting at the head of the first. We can subtract vectors geometrically by adding the negative of the vector we are subtracting to the first vector in the same manner. There are many different ways to multiply two vectors together, 
and each one of these different ways yields a different kind of result with its own geometric interpretation. The component product is usually not formally introduced in textbooks and is not used very often. As its name suggests, the component product comes from multiplying each element of one vector by an element of another. The result this yields is not particularly useful because there is no way to geometrically interpret this result. This is why the two other multiplication methods are more widely used. The scalar product, also known as the dot product, is a very important vector operation because of its geometric significance. It is denoted with the dot operator, which is where it gets the name dot product. Actually taking the dot product is extremely easy. We multiply the components of the first vector by the components of the second and add our results. As the name suggests, we are left with a single scalar value rather than a vector as the result. There is a very important trigonometric property of the dot product that relates the dot product to the lengths of the two vectors and the angle between them. The dot product of a and b is equal to the length of a times the length of b times the cosine of the angle between the two. This identity is commonly used to determine the angle between the two vectors. Theta, which is the angle between the two, is equal to the inverse cosine of the dot product of a and b divided by the length of a times the length of b. Geometrically, the dot product is significant because it allows for us to calculate the magnitude of one vector in the direction of another. Usually at least one or both vectors are normalized when working with the dot product. Please stop for a second to understand the geometric significance between taking the dot product between a normalized and unnormalized vector. In this particular scenario, our vector v is normalized, which means it has a magnitude of 1, and it also points in the y-axis direction. When we take the dot product of v with w, we arrive at 3, which is a scalar. 3 is the magnitude of w in the direction of v, which makes perfect sense, because v is in the direction of the y-axis, and w's y-component is 3. So before I get into the vector across product, I should probably tell you guys that it's only defined in three and seven dimensions. But before you freak out, we're going to be looking at two different ways to achieve the same thing geometrically that the cross product does in 3D and only two dimensions. In 3D, the cross product takes two vectors and returns a third vector that is perpendicular to the two. Here we're looking at our first vector product analog in 2D. In two dimensions, there's no such thing as a vector that is perpendicular to two non-parallel vectors. But we can create a vector perpendicular to a single vector by switching the components of the vector and negating a sign. You may geometrically interpret this as taking the negative inverse of the slope of a line. Here we have a second way to interpret a 3D cross product in 2D. The geometric interpretation of this formula is that it returns a magnitude of a vector in the third dimension perpendicular to the plane where the two supplied vectors lie. Unfortunately, I cannot get into where this equation was derived from because it touches on determinants and linear algebra topics that I have yet to discuss. So I would just like to say thank you and congratulations to everybody who completed watching this video tutorial. Unfortunately, vectors, as well as the vast majority of linear algebra topics, are completely abstract. This means that it's hard for you to conceptualize these visually, but just remember that it's very important that you grasp these abstract ideas so that you can utilize them for concrete applications.